What if it was this easy to locate cancer cells in the body? Scientists in Michigan say it's possible, and they're working to prove it. Hello, and welcome to the March 2017 edition of Light Matters. I'm your host, Justine Murphy. If cancer and tumor cells were illuminated, surgically removing any trace of them would be guaranteed. A fluorescent probe developed by researchers in Michigan could do just that, giving surgeons a huge advantage. Stay tuned for more on that later in the show. Also coming up is News in Focus, a rundown of this month's top industry news. And we'll talk about how lasers could show us more accurately what dinosaurs looked like. Pupil dilating eye drops could someday be a thing of the past, thanks to a new camera that is not only smaller and more portable than other similar devices, but also less expensive. Developed by a team from the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Center at Harvard Medical School and the University of Illinois Chicago's College of Medicine, the new camera works by emitting infrared light. Most retina cameras use white light, which is why pupil dilating eye drops are needed. The infrared light focuses the camera on the retina, after which a quick flash of white light is delivered as the picture is taken. These pictures show the retina and its blood supply, as well as a portion of the optic nerve that leads into the retina. This technique can reveal health issues like diabetes, glaucoma, and even elevated pressure around the brain. The new device is currently just a prototype, but the researchers anticipate it will someday be a widely used tool for ophthalmologists and other physicians. OptoSigma Corporation USA has named Guy Ear its new president and CEO. He serves in the same capacity for OptoSigma Europe. The appointment aims to reinforce and strengthen ties between the American and European subsidiaries of the group, offering more flexibility and efficiency when responding to rapid changes in the photonics industry. New York University's Tandon School of Engineering will debut a 3D cardboard viewer in its student acceptance packages, taking recipients on a journey into a microscopic, intracellular world. It offers a virtual reality game environment where they can watch cells communicate using chemical signals. This virtual reality game is being used as an admissions tool, essentially allowing students to envision themselves as a part of Tandon's world-class research community. Users visit the Laboratory for Mechanobiology and Regenerative Medicine, where they are virtually dropped through a microscope's eyepiece to the interstice between bone and capillary forming endothelial cells. They then experience a colorful close-up view of the process by which bone cells use chemical signals called paracrines to enjoin capillary endothelial cells to form new blood vessels. The European Photonics Industry Consortium, or EPIC, and the Israel Association of Electronics and Software Industries are partnering to advance mutually advantageous activities in the field of photonics. The alliance will encourage direct contact and cooperation between the consortiums and their members with the exchange of information and contacts, collaborative research projects, delegation visits, trade missions, and business events. Semiconductor software developer Coventor Incorporated has joined the American Institute for Manufacturing Integrated Photonics, also called AIM Photonics. The North Carolina-based company will provide access to its physics-driven 3D modeling technology to improve the performance and manufacturability of complex integrated photonics designs. Established in 2015, AIM Photonics is managed by the State University of New York Polytechnic Institute. If cancer and tumor cells were illuminated within the body, surgeons would be 100% confident that they've removed every last trace of them. Well, researchers at Michigan Technological University are working to make this happen. Test tube cancer antibodies coupled with special enzymes have historically been used to highlight malignancies during surgery since they bind to tumor cells. But they are colorless, making it difficult for doctors to fully pinpoint the cancer tissue. The Michigan researchers have developed a fluorescent probe that bonds to those enzyme-coated antibodies and makes them glow under fluorescent light. The novel probe shines in near-infrared, penetrating deep into tissues. This property would allow surgeons to detect malignancies that may be buried within healthy tissue. Fluorescing the cancer cells red in this way would result in less background noise during surgery too, as other fluorescent tissues typically glow green or blue. 
Researchers have also found that the probe responds quickly to enzymes at ultra-low concentrations, and its fluorescence is stable and long-lasting, allowing it to shine throughout hours-long cancer operations. In the future, the Michigan Tech team hopes to collaborate with medical researchers to refine the new probe system, incorporating enzyme-labeled cancer antibodies and developing it as a guide for surgeons. With only fossils and bones and no actual photographs left behind, depictions of dinosaurs' flesh and skin have only ever been speculation. Depictions of these beasts have long relied on artistic renderings based on clues archaeologists and paleontologists have found and studied. But now, researchers at the University of Hong Kong are using a new laser technology to get a better idea of what dinosaurs' exteriors might actually have looked like. Developed by Tom Kay, director of the Arizona-based Foundation for Scientific Advancement, the new technology features a 405 nanometer laser diode in a custom scanner. Called laser-stimulated fluorescence imaging, the technology employs high-power lasers that cause any unseen soft tissues preserved within the bones to fluoresce. This can reveal the actual shape of the dinosaur. Using this new technology, the Hong Kong team has been able to reconstruct the first highly detailed body outline of an Anchiornis, a feathered bird-like dinosaur, based on high-definition images of its preserved soft tissues. The reconstruction shows the contours of the creature's wings, legs, and even perfectly preserved foot scales. Dr. Michael Pittman, a research professor in the university's Department of Earth Sciences, says the detail was so well lit that even the texture of the skin was visible. The findings could provide crucial information for reconstructing how dinosaurs eventually achieved flight and are providing new details about the origin of birds. The Anchiornis lived in the late Jurassic period about 160 million years ago, around the time that paleontologists believe birds first appeared. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Light Matters. Be sure to connect with us on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And until next time, keep following the photons.